Welcome to Bridging Voices, the video podcast series by the Conrad Adenauer Stiftung here in Brussels. My name is Freya Chalpool. I am from the Asia Europe Foundation. I'm the Youth Project Coordinator in the Education Department, um, and I'm so happy to be here and fa- be part of this podcast series. Um, I'm here joined with two wonderful guests. I have Eileen Tan from Singapore, a management consultant by day and a World Economic Forum global shaper by night. Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Alina. And I have Anna Bandas, a legal professional and youth leader from West Bengal, India. Namaste, everyone. So we have been here in Brussels for the last few days now for the Young Indo-Pacific Conference. Um, we are. Uh, this is a forum that has been created by three youth think tanks, Polis 180, the Student Think Tank for European Asia Relations, and European Guangxi. And this edition has been so, uh, supported by the Asia Europe Foundation and my colleagues and uh, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung as well. Um, and we were so happy to be able to support uh, support this forum and support a number of youth participants traveling from Europe and Asia to join us here in Brussels for the forum. Um, the Young Indo-Pacific Forum was initiated last year and so this was the first edition that was organized in person which was so great that we got to bring so many people together um, to collaborate, to learn from one another and to really just exchange in conversations. So I want our two guests here to first perhaps share their experiences of the last few days Alina, do you want to start? Yeah, sure, sure. I think um, first thing is I really love the weather in Brussels. <laughs> Coming from Singapore, you know, we get summer all year round. So Brussels is like a really refreshing change from the past year. I've, I've been, you know, because I've been living in Singapore for quite a long time right now. So yeah, uh, apart from the weather, I think it's a really inspiring event overall like really from right from the beginning to be honest before I came here um I was excited about the event I thought I would like it but I didn't know I would like it this much (laughs) that's good (laughs) yeah I mean because because I mean I had expectations I really wanted to get to meet youth from different parts of the world and in particular different parts of Europe because I grew up in Singapore most of you know my life I lived in um, South Korea for some years. I've also lived in the United States, but and I've traveled to Europe more when I was younger, I think, but never really had this opportunity to, on a daily basis, converse and talk about anything, you know, whether it's like the weather, the food, the culture, or even policy matters, which is what we're here <laughs> for, <laughs> you know, with, with fellow peers and, and youth from, uh, not just youth, but also some senior leaders from Europe itself. So it's really eye-opening so I, I really love that part of it I think back to I mean wh- what we're here for which is you know from policy and policy matters I think oh, what I liked most about if was that you really get to see very diverse perspectives about a single social issue that may you may think plug your nation or um, region and you realize that, oh, you know, actually it's not too different in the other part of the world. And I used to think that, uh, because I, I studied political science in school, and in in the books at least, they tend to suggest that, you know, ASEAN is really diverse, we're really too different from each other, and then, you know, the European Union or the European nations share a much stronger common kind of identity, which I think, to some extent, from what I've learned in the past few days, is true. But at the same time, there are so many nuances within the European Union as well that really contributes or to or really complicates the the policy making process a lot more than I had thought I knew <laughs> in the past. So, I you know, in terms of like eye opening, definitely it's great, and I think that it's lovely that you know it's, this is coming out of COVID after so many years. Finally, everyone is really able to meet in person to build really real um, and what I think would be long-lasting friendships. And also, finally, another point is um, it's really powerful to see that there are so many youths from different parts of the world that are genuinely invested Mm -hmm. in wanting to contribute to not just a nation, but to 
mutual improvement across the regions and bilaterally, multilaterally. And find, to my final point, that has made me really inspired throughout this event as well. I mean, the, you know, apart from all the learnings I've had, it's where you get to see, I mean, this entire event is brought together by three very well um, organ, like led think tanks, youth led think tanks in the Europe. And it's sparked a lot of inspiration in me to think, you know, maybe is there something like that we should be doing in Asia or in Asia, we have our fair share, at least in Singapore, we have our fair share of youth led organizations. So it's also inspiring to see, you know, whether we could leverage you know, the, you know, synergies and energies given by youth across the regions more so that we can create something even bigger. I mean, you if it's great, right? So can we go even further than that? Yeah, exactly. I think this is such a wonderful example of young people organizing for young people. Mm. And that sort of leadership is so important, right? Mm. To be able to demonstrate that young people are, are already leaders and yes. are, are very capable of contributing mm-hmm. to this space and mm-hmm. should be able to should be here should be present. Anurban, what are your your thoughts, your reflections on the the last few days here? Well, it is my first time in Europe, so certainly I if if Asia Europe Foundation's goal was to bring together <laughs> Asia and Europe, I think they have achieved it quite <laughs> Thank well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Young Indo Pacific Forum uh, has been a very phenomenal experience because. Uh, I have never seen another forum with so many, uh, you know, uh, diverse people coming together, uh, so many different program points, and uh, all of this, you, you feel amazed when you learn that all of this is being led by youth. So uh, th- this is a um, c- classic example of organic spaces li- created by the youth for the youth. Yeah. So that is the spirit of uh, the Young Indo-Pacific Forum. I have met people from across Asia and Europe and uh, we hope to work together uh, in the coming days to secure um, a rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific. I think that's the priority. Uh, it, it, is, it is also a pleasure for me to meet with so many uh, of officials from European Commission, ASEAN as well. I met the Secretary General of ASEAN, by the way, uh, as well as Jutta uh, Urparelen, mm-hmm. uh, the European Commissioner for International Partnerships. Mm-hmm. So all of them, they share with me their aspiration for working together with our region and this outreach, uh, this is something that must be appreciated. This is something we need as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you cannot exclude the youth from uh, these conversations, right? So that is why when this year we, we recommended that you know you include the youth in, uh, in, in, in the delegations, in the national delegations as well, maybe in the upcoming summits. Yeah. I think that is a very welcome step. So certainly, uh, I, 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 f- I personally, I, I would like to uh, express my gratefulness for this opportunity to Police 180, Europe in Guangxi, and STEER, because uh, I come from uh, Bengal in India, and you know, uh, I see youth who want to have a voice in these platforms. Mm-hmm. But uh, due to several factors, uh, we feel unheard. We feel like uh, we don't have a space on the table. So. I, I'm so proud to represent their voices today mm. in Brussels. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think it's um, oh so touched by these words <laughs> because really it is so it's such a valuable opportunity to be able to bring bring young people together for me for for the work that I get to do here uh, at ASEF and um, and to be able to support the organizers of Young Indo Pacific Forum because because. Uh, it's it's all very well us us organizing, but it's even better when we can support youth organizing mm-hmm. as well. Um, you touched on very briefly the 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 message that we we put together yesterday. So this was really great. That so today we're actually recording this on a sort of historic day. It's the first EU ASEAN summit, the commemorative summit after forty five years of relations between the two regions and two institutions. Um, and we were very happy to be able to record yesterday a video message that was delivered at the opening ceremony of the EU ASEAN Summit, and this was a message that was put together by youth delegates yesterday, by representatives from the Young Indo-Pacific Forum, and a 
couple of other youth initiatives. And and this is exactly something that we called for, as you said, Annabelle. We we followed up on on Commissioner Erbelinen's mm. suggestion to have a youth delegate, uh, a youth representative in the delegations of the upcoming and future summits. And I think this is just one recommendation, one th- small thing that they should do and should we really hoped to see in the future. Um, and so we're we're we are very happy to. Um, have been able to deliver this message, I think. Uh, there's a lot more that can be done. I mean, we would have liked to be there in person, of course, <laughs> um, but it's a start and, and it's a it's a space where the, the voice wasn't there before, hasn't been. So I think it's really great that we were able to do this and put together the voice of the young people. Um, do you guys have any comments or, or reflections on yesterday's EURC and Youth Summit, which was a side event of, of today's summit? Or, or the message that we, we put together? Anaban, would you like to start? Well, uh, yes, uh, I, I feel like the the fact that I, as a representative of the broader Indo-Pacific region, even got a seat at the table, because I'm from a non-ASEAN, non-EU country, mm-hmm. but I still found a, a seat at the table because both of our partners in EU and ASEAN realize the need for outreach in the border, broader region. Uh, that is why EU are th- that is the significance uh, I would say of the EU ASEAN summit and within that the EU ASEAN Youth Summit as well. Yesterday, uh, if you if you noticed, I I, I led an intervention uh, in the plenary session where I said, see the significance of the EU ASEAN Youth Summit is that mm-hmm. now there is a human factor involved. You know, you coming over from Asia, sitting with your colleagues uh, from Europe, many of whom who sh- shared their stories with me and say that you know the consequences of, say, the Russian invasion, they face it in their daily lives. Uh, it touched my heart. Now when I go back, now when I work in the policy spaces, I know someone I, uh, someone I met back there and told their story to me face to face. They're getting affected. My choices, my decisions uh, as a youth leader back home, they will affect people in Europe and beyond as well. Uh, so there is a human, I think the human angle, that is the essence of having an EU ASEAN summit. We are essentially, I, I would say, there there must have been at least five future prime ministers or presidents in that room <laughs> with me. Sure. So certainly we are, we, are uh, we will be the leaders of the future, so it is certainly very crucial that we convene with purpose and form a shared vision of the, of the future that we want. Mm-hmm. I'd say we're leaders already. <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Having done this here. Alina, what do you yeah, think? I think adding on to what Anna Byrne said, I think one key thing during the EU um, ASEAN Youth Summit is it's really a culmination of all these different youth initiatives that have been happening in the past couple of months this year, right? We had the, I mean, the, the, the video that we recorded, it's not just coming out of IF, but we've also had representatives from the Youth Sounding Board or the um, EU ASEAN Young Leaders Forum. And I think it's really... Uh, meaningful plus yesterday I th- uh, to you know to Anna's Bond's point we had it's like this human factor where it's longer as working remotely discussing matters which is important because that takes time and we can't you know all of us are doing this out of voluntary so we, we can't really um, fly ourselves to Brussels for one year to <laughs> to, <laughs> to work in person right <laughs> not even if us wants to sponsor it so I think the the human factor was really powerful yesterday and it's not just the youth coming together. Yesterday, you know, when we combined our recommendations, we all had breakout sessions where we got to discuss um, the fa- our recommend the youth recommendations further, refine it better and there we had um, senior representatives from different organizations as well and who are you know people who are based in different parts of Europe and it's really valuable because I mean of course youth voices need to be heard but at the same time we also need to um, balance it with nuances with what's really happening in policy making today so having this kind of in-person um, meaningful like in-depth discussion and exchange between the senior leaders as well as the, um, to your words, young budding leaders really helps um, get to, I think, I mean, it's a term that people use it a lot today, but, you know, it really improves what they call intergenerational equity in policymaking, which, uh, yeah, so I think that the, that to me, that was the significance of yesterday's submit to really bring everyone together, you know, for the first time, uh, 
and show that there is a potential for even better discourse going forward in the future years as well. Yeah, yeah, that intergenerational dialogue yeah. is so important, um, especially and e- even especially for that human connection because it's so much better to so much easier to get your point across mm-hmm. when you're sat next to a decision maker rather right. than them receiving like a report or a a document with recommendations you know when they can actually talk Mm -hmm. to young people and hear what the challenges are what the barriers what Mm -hmm. what young people want what what the youth perspective Mm -hmm. on different issues is then I think it's much more valuable and much more memorable for them and can have a greater impact in in their decision making process which we should be part of as well yeah (laughs) Yeah, I just wanted to add as well where you know the, the, the human part of things it's this kind of recommendations, use perspectives, it's very easy. I mean, it's very easy for us to put it across in online channels, 2D matters, but when you do it in, in person, in a 3D or what do you call it, 4D? I don't know. <laughs> in person, essentially. It, it the, I think it makes the stakes a lot higher because when you talk to the person um, directly, you can see you know, where the person is coming from, there's emotions in it, you know, it's not just a recommendation because, you know, I want to put a recommendation in, but it's because maybe, you know, it really affects people from my region or from my country or my peers over here. So I think, yeah, like the in-person element, hopefully COVID gets better. And (laughs) I think that really contributes. Of course, yes, definitely. Since we're here, we've come together. I mean, it's, it's great to be in person, exactly. Um, and I think this whole forum has been a great um, representation of young people coming together for multilateralism, right? I mean, that's that's really the aim here. Um, I mean, one of the main overarching aims. What do you want to see more of, or, or how can we increase further the youth engagement in multilateralism? It's a topic we touched on during during the program a little bit as well. Um, but what are your what are your thoughts? What are your takeaways on this on this topic? Anaban, you want to start? Certainly, uh, I I feel uh, the youth engagement in multilateral processes it assumes special significance in the post pandemic world order because uh, we uh, we have uh, heard so much of uh, you know discourse in the past few years that multilateralism itself is under challenge in our our uh, current uh, day and time. So how do you make people back home, you know, feel like that it, it, multilateral forums are somewhere they should be investing their diplomatic resources, their time, uh, because, uh, you know, in during the pandemic, you did see that, you know, the legitimacy was affected of many multilateral institutions because they were not able to address the challenges. They were not able to convince the masses that see uh, your voice is there. The public, w- the public was not convinced that, hey, they have a voice. Uh, so, involving the youth in these multilateral processes, it will not only make the discourses more richer, like, you know, they would have, uh, you, you already saw the kind of recommendations we placed, uh, that, that shows what we can contribute to these multilateral processes. Mm-hmm. Certainly, that is one thing, and second is that uh, it would make these processes far more inclusive. Uh, people back home, we would have a much easier time to convince people back home that uh, see this is something you should take an interest in. Yeah. This is our forum. And uh, as, as I'm coming from India, uh, our approach since uh, a long time, since an ancient, ancient times is Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which is that the world is our family. The world is one family. Yeah. Therefore, uh, who else to take forward that message uh, other than the youth, right? Yeah, I like that. That's such, an, such a good point, the... The world being the, the world is a family. The world a is family. one family. The world is one family. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that one. That's f- that's for sure. Alina. Yeah, I think in terms of tran- you know like um, multilateralism, one thing is becoming more obvious is that a lot of the issues that we face today uh, are really transnational in nature. You know, with um, we talked a lot about hybrid threats and all across and non-traditional security threats during this forum in the past few days, and it's really clear that in your opponents today they are working cross borders. So it's really ineffective for uh, for countries to stay with just domestic policies, with just bilateral uh, 
agreements with regard to security frameworks on certain threats like cybersecurity and all because it goes way beyond that. So if you just focus in your own boundaries, you ha- you leave a lot of loopholes for, well, you know, evil intending, intending people <laughs> to, to, to manipulate. So I think with that, all the more it's important to really make um, government leaders as well as general public to believe in the need for greater multilateralism in a ver- variety of aspects. And I think... With in order to do that, because you know there's also rise of populism and also nationalism in a lot of different countries today, and I think you have to give uh, to to be fair to people who believe in those ideas. It's also because with globalization, to some point, some people have been left behind. Yeah. So, what I'm thinking is for us to be able to enable better multilateralism going forward, uh, whether it's at the senior or youth level. We need to start by empowering the people from within our nations as well. It's about educating the general public about um, what is the relevance of the other parts of the world to yeah. who we are today. You know, why is it important that we help our neighbors? Why is it important that, you know, even though maybe we are really advanced, we need to take into consideration someone else's um, concerns, for example, like in Asia Maybe Ukraine is really far away, but there's a lot of repercussions with regard to what's happening in that region to, you know, another region that's like thousands of kilometers, you know, back back in Asia. So one is educating people about it, but it's not enough just to educate. You need to empower the people to do it. So in our policies and all, we also need to think about how do we then ensure better inclusiveness to, so that people don't get left behind. Yeah. And how do we empower people to engage multilateralism? Because a lot of times you can be working, you know, you ha- everyone has their very busy 9 to 5 or 9 to, I don't know, nine, in, in China they have like 996, right? <laughs> <laughs> like really busy jobs. So but with all of that, how do you empower people to still be, you know, get informed about different matters across like, you know, foreign policies? Uh, how do you, show them and and make it easier for them to contribute to you know um kind of connectivity or or partnerships at the individual or organizational and even national level so i think that's um really important as well and of course i think we also talked about it a lot about um in in during our discussions in the past few days which is on top of those you need to enable as well not just through education but the the logistics and the, the infrastructure must be there you need to make it easier for people to get visas to go somewhere (laughs) right because i mean you can have a really good scholarship program but if the visa is you can't give the person a visa then the person can't benefit anyway so i think all of those needs to be in place Mm -hmm. to really then enable better um, multilateralism between nations as well you know at, at both the youth and the senior level yeah yeah, I think it's uh, it's an important... It's also beyond countries working together, even within countries, yeah. I mean, different ministries working together, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you have education ministries pushing for mobility, yeah. mobility programs, etc. Uh, but those are only... Depend- that those are dependent on on ministries that issue visas and embassies in the other countries right mm-hmm. so so all of these different institutions need to work together more closely as well and we've also seen generally how powerful are these exchange you know programs have been where mm-hmm. people initially may not think much about a country or a region and they go there to study for a couple of years and then suddenly you know they become like expert in that region and all because they just fa- fell in love because they understood the concerns of the people there more so yeah, I think that is yeah, yeah, yeah. The value of mobility, I think, is I mean, even even an event like mm. this is a I would say is a short term yeah. mobility experience. And I mean, as as you said, Annabelle, this is your first time in Europe, mm. and, and I know for a num- number of others, it's, it was as well. And and that opportunity that that we've been able to support you guys with has been so great. But more needs to just be done. Just at one more point as well, because I just recalled something that was brought up during yesterday's breakout discussion. There was this, um, you know, the thing about more people-to-people connectivity, that can actually become so powerful that it helps overcome some of the schisms that prevent real movement at the higher, you know, 
government to government level kind of yeah. thing because some countries may want to collaborate but they have so much historical baggage yeah. that makes it difficult but when you have cultural exchanges and the people really wanting those exchange you know when it's happening at the grassroots level at a very spontaneous yeah. level it's hard to stop yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's it also is a generational thing right i mean we it's we have a group of young people who've all come together for this event specifically who wanted to overcome those in some cases overcome significant political differences mm-hmm. between different countries or or, mm-hmm. or historical historical baggage as mm-hmm. you said um, but the willingness is there i yeah. think especially from young people yeah. okay we we maybe wrap it up with with one last question um, of of what do you want to see more of in the future what are your hopes for for youth in multilateralism for more forum more events like young indo pacific forum or future editions of young indo pacific forum any any dreams hopes wishes visions and ben well certainly there are a lot you know uh, we could talk about our hopes and dreams <laughs> for the next edition all day we could do a whole podcast on this <laughs> and <laughs> what we want the youth from our two regions to do together it's, it it would be uh, uh but i would anyway i would like to summarize uh, my my emotions here for for both of you uh i i i feel uh, i feel uh, very connected to what many many uh, decades ago someone from india uh, uh, uh who's considered a national icon for our youth he was a monk he was a scholar he, he his name was swami vivekananda and he he told the youth back in the day when india was suffering under colonial rule that if you set your mind to something uh you can achieve it arise awake and stop not until the goal is reached yeah. therefore our goal is not reached therefore we will not stop till it is reached i believe that uh, in the coming days i hope to see uh, uh, organizations such as asf such as khas and and more organizations probably joining hands with you this is my my call this is my urging through this uh, this podcast to all such organizations that please join hands with us please uh, provide more platform more space for uh, genuine youth voices from uh, our region in asia and europe to come forward to put their views because we live in such a uh, times of unprecedented turmoil yeah. the democratic order is under under threat uh, in our region itself we face so many challenges uh, and we discuss some of them the theme this year of the young indo pacific forum for some of you who might be just joining in was hybrid warfare we discussed uh hybrid hybrid threats such as in the cyber domain in climate change trade uh security in the indo pacific and you saw the panel uh, panel discussions you see the kind of concerns we have as youth today yeah. because we we know that these are issues we will have to keep uh, tackling with in over the coming decades so i hope we can keep building this discourse probably keep refining the kind of recommendations very strong recommendations that we made this year for next year i hope i do hope you come to asia i we i do hope that we get to host you as well mm-hmm. and uh, i hope that um we keep moving our discourse forward uh, on how to involve the youth because on the first day itself at the press club brussels we had a youth round table where uh, the organizers were kind enough to include us as panelists we shared yes. our, our experiences from the regions uh as to how we believe we can involve more youth in decision making so probably next year as well we uh, i hope to see you creating more space for that and i hope that uh, very soon we will uh, you know you talked about schism you talked about you know uh, nationalism ultra nationalism probably uh, which hampers this kind of cooperation maybe uh, us youth leading and co- coming forward uh maybe that will change and maybe we'll realize that we converge more than we diverge exactly exactly you said it so well <laughs> no, no space for no space <laughs> <laughs> i think maybe i'll just add a bit to what anna brand said on top of just you's coming together definitely i would love to see if happening in asia as well mm-hmm. because i mean this year we got the european perspective right and next year i think it would be a great experience for our european friends as well if you know t- we could end up somewhere in hopefully exotic <laughs> maybe <laughs> in asia and and you know i think that would really enrich the program a lot more yeah. and um another thing is beyond just a lot of all this youth uh, forums which 
uh, is start really starting to grow in numbers and skill now. I mean, we could go a lot more, of course, but on top of that, I think one thing that would really strengthen the discourse would be to have a lot more open uh, platforms for open and honest conversations between not just with between youth, but actually between youth and policymakers, and hopefully not just you know short one hour sessions like we had in mm-hmm. the youth summit yesterday. Where hopefully you know we can have a bit more time at least. Yeah. So that would really help balance the you know the thinking about policy making and all. Because um, to give all our you know hardworking policymakers some real good credit, they they work really hard on writing those policies and there's real trade-offs at stake for them as well so sometimes as as youth i think you know it's easy because we're not really setting the policies so <laughs> to some extent you know we can say things that are a bit more ideal and mm-hmm. of course we would also try to balance so i think this kind of open and honest discussion would really yeah. help to um improve the credibility of both parties and also then you know it's a mutual thing so it improves the use understanding of policy making and it also helps the policymakers um, create more inclusive and um, good policies over in the longer run. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that that's such an important point. Uh, like more sustained dialogue, yeah. right? Not just yeah. just a one hour session. Correct. Just more continued conversations yeah. and and um, policymakers to to really take on board the valuable input yeah. of young people. I mean, even like regular, you know, because policymakers they have working committees and working teams right so even if every say twice or twice a year you or even every quarterly hopefully you you in those working committees you know you just involve some youth representatives here and there i think it would really help enrich conversations sure sure i mean one of the one of the things that was it was included in the video message that was delivered today was uh that young people will suffer the consequence of inaction Mm -hmm. right therefore Young people's voices need to be included yeah. and input needs to be have action taken on yeah. following conversations. It can't just be the conversation and that's it. Mm. There needs to be action afterwards. Certainly, I think I agree with you, Freya, because even on the first day, I think we talked about this. We are sitting on panels, on youth councils. We are founders. We are trying to do so much. We have come here to Brussels. Uh, but ultimately, if uh, this doesn't lead to actions you know uh, if we do not deliver you know on actions uh, these recommendations would just remain a pdf file and that will be heartbreaking given the kind of effort we've put in we know uh, how much uh, effort has been put in how much emotions as well you know we, ha- we have i think we have uh, it's, these, are, these are not just technical uh, issues for us mm-hmm. security in the indo-pacific may be an academic uh, topic of interest for some but for us it's a it's a, a real life it, a real life um, uh, issue. Yeah. It is the, it is an existential issue. It, uh, trade is an existential issue. Sustainability. You know, many communities uh, in the Asia Pacific region. You know, you know uh, the Pacific Islander nations. They face uh, mm-hmm. existential threat yeah. uh, if we do not act on climate change. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, uh, I believe uh, these recommendations they represent the collective voice uh, of of our youth from both of these regions. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I, I, I urge, uh, you know, our, our leaders, our policymakers, since we are th- not there yet, apparently, it will be a few years. <laughs> <laughs> so as for now, I, I, I would urge the policymakers in charge to really pay heed to our voice. Mm-hmm. As we saw this morning at the EU, EU ASEAN Commemorative Summit, our, our, video, our, our video communique was played there. Mm-hmm. So I hope... Uh, up to after this video is played, I hope they also, you know, take up on those words. Yes, exactly. Yeah, here for more partnerships, more collaboration. Um, I think we could go on and on, but <laughs> <laughs> in the, for the sake of time, thank you very much, Alina. Thank you, and Anurban, thank and you. thank you all those listening. Let's keep these conversations going. Thank you very much.